In this video I'll be showing you how to set up a live search bar in React.js using the native fetch API. In this instance we'll be searching for foots just as an example. So as you can see it supports a multi-search so pear, pineapple, when they enter in more information it narrows it down and it, other foots as well. Okay, so currently we just got this very simple setup here. Nothing about it is dynamic at the moment. As you can see, this is a very simple layout. You've got paragraph, which acts as the title. It's very simple input, which I've styled. I've styled this myself. Again, it's not a tutorial on styling or anything like that. These, which aren't obviously, they're not dynamically rendered. And then, but I will show you the database. It's just a simple Firebase, uh, real-time database. And we've got all the um, we've got all the documents here in this collection. Uh, yeah, so we've got all the names. They they all just they, they all have like a uniform name field, so we can just loop through it and collect all the names. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, change this input element or component, sorry, into a controlled component. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import use state hook and whilst we're at it we'll import the use effect hook as well because we'll, we'll be using that later to send the http request because that's the hook that you need to send http requests in uh i'll explain why in a second we'll say on change well first actually we need to create the actually create the state so we'll say Well, it'll be, it'll be an empty string to start off with, but then on change it will be. Well, actually, it will, it will be. Uh, we need access to the event, so. Event.target.value. So, whatever text data the user types into the input, that will be, that will be set basically into value. And then value, simply be value. And then what we need to do now is we need to uh, create the callback function and the use effect. So it'll be triggered at the end of every render cycle, but the dependency as specified by the array, which is the second argument, will be value. So it'll be triggered at the end of every render cycle, only when value changes though. So not every render cycle, only the render cycles when value changes. So if, he's creating a statement, if value.length greater than zero, in other words, if they've actually typed something in, into the text box, then we'll say fetch. Inside the fetch string will be this, this document here. So we'll copy it, the one that contains all the fruit, and then we'll add .json, because we will be handling the data using JSON. And then, then so when we when it's finished uh, requesting the data, when it's got back the data basically, response, because it retrieves the data in JSON, so what we need to do is we we'll need to convert that JSON into a JavaScript object and then put another then on that so we have access to the decoded JavaScript object which has been retrieved from the data, from the JSON object and what we need to do now is we'll say let search query equal value dot two lowercase because we, we don't want two conflicting uh, cases basically we just we're just gonna uh, do the search all lowercase, so therefore it matches basically. And then we'll say we'll create a loop now. We'll loop through response data, so you can loop through all the food documents. Whoops, I thought I missed that in. And then we'll say let food response data each iteration, and then dot name because remember that that was the name of the field. And two lowercase again, so they match cases. So, so one of them isn't doesn't have capital letters, but the other one doesn't. And then 
What we need to do now is, I'll explain this in a second. Search query dot length. So if our search query is just A and fruit is apple, then obviously it will match because fruit, what's sliced is basically, it returns uh, fruit, but only between these uh, iterations. So zero will be the starting value. Search query dot length will be the end value. So if fruit is only one character long, then it will return the fruit, but just only the first character of it. So if we type in um, that pear, it's not going to match with apple basically, because apple does have a P in it, but it, the P isn't at the start, unlike how it is in pear. So that's the reason why we do that. I hope that made sense. But And then index of search query, so not equal to minus one. The reason why not equal is because it will only be minus one if there's no match. What we need to do now is, okay, we need to actually store what we get back in an array so we can render it out onto a website. So we'll just create an empty array here. And then we'll say set result, set a callback function. So we have access. Actually, we don't need parentheses there. We have access to the previous data because obviously we want to return like pear, pineapple, and peach. If we don't include the previous results, then it will, then it will only show one of them at random. So it might show pear, it might show peach, but we don't know which one. All we know, all we know is that it will only show one. We don't want that, you want to show them all as long as they match. And then so we use the spread operator to show uh, that pear and peach individually in the array. And then you might as well include catch, just in case there's an error. And what we need to do now, this is very important. Basically, what we, what we need to do now is we need to, we want the loop to start from scratch. So we don't want basically Apple to be shown up in the results for pair. If we don't clear the array results, then it's going to mess everything up. What we need to do now is very simply, just at the end, else uh, in relation to, to the parent of statements, the very first one. We will say set result. We'll also set this to an empty array as well. The reason being is because it, if if it's not greater than zero, so that means that it is zero. So they obviously want to delete all the characters in, in, in the input box. And the final thing that we want to do now is we need to loop through the uh, result array and display all the values. So we'll say curly bases, result.map, result index. The reason for index is because we want to uh, include the key value because we should be doing that if we are uh, rendering elements in a loop. I'm going to include an A tag here, even though I haven't actually stored the links in the database. This is probably what you would do if um, you did have a live search result of this nature. You would probably uh, include them back to an A tag. So obviously, when the user clicks, it will just take them to the left route. I've set up a custom class here. Obviously, it doesn't really have. It's not really related to the tutorial though. And inside, uh, we'll say the result value. So the reason why we're getting an error here is because we just messed up the parentheses a bit. So we'll solve that now. Adding the correct parentheses, we just get an error because they don't like that, but it should be fine. And now we go back, refresh the page, type in something like, yeah. So it, it does take a while to for the HTTP request to be sent and obviously to receive the result. But it is, it, it is working now. As you can see, and yeah, I hope that helps. Obviously, when they click, you know there hasn't been a href link set, but yeah, this is how you do it, and I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any troubles, then don't hesitate to comment. Uh, here you go, it's banana and blueberry. Yeah, so don't uh, don't hesitate to comment any queries, or maybe you want me to elaborate on anything. I'll be I'll be. 
uh, obliged to answer any requests that you have. And yeah, I hope this helps. Peace out.